All right, this video is just for my students. We're going to be focusing on working on the Fraction Fun pamphlet project. Uh, this project, the goal is to get students to write their, their processes, uh, help to uh, really firm up the understanding of working with fractions. Uh, as you know, in this unit, we've focused on many of the prerequisite skills, like simplifying, um, as well as how to multiply and divide fractions and mixed numbers. So this step-by-step step, step, by step guide is intended for you to follow directions, to write carefully, to read and understand uh, what you've written, to really uh, firm up and solidify uh, your knowledge of the fraction concepts related to multiplying and dividing fractions. So the rubric you, you've been provided uh, is very clear on the expectations that you need and it's highly recommended you read it over uh, carefully and uh, kind of grade yourself on how you did on your project before you hand it in. That's going to give you the best chance for success. Um, you should know that the, uh, the handout you're going to be given is going to already have all your layout done for your pamphlet. Uh, as you know, a pamphlet's goal is to encourage people to do something. So you might find a pamphlet in a hotel advertising uh, different uh, touristy types of things, uh, or you might find a pamphlet uh, you know, advertising a, a destination uh, in a travel agency. So you know, when you make your pamphlet, I want you to follow the directions on there um, for making your cover decorated um, with some examples. You can see some examples, uh, some students who have done some projects in the past. I've covered up the names of the students, but you can see you know, they've done some nice coloring, like this one's rainbow style, uh, with some examples on it, you know, and, and just make it interesting. You know, and some students have even gone so far as to, uh, you know, depict their teacher on there. So, you know, there's a lot of fun things you can do with that. Please understand that the artwork for your project really isn't as important, um, isn't at all important. We just want it to look nice, and I hope that you consider that when you first begin. Um, the rubric, you know, shows that the cover's worth 25 points, must include your name. Um, if you're missing your name or if it's not colored in, you won't anywhere near get those total points, and that's supposed to be the easiest part of the project. Now, you'll notice in page one of the project, it, it lets you know that, or I'm sorry, page one will be the cover. Page two, and it gets a little confusing here, but the second page would be uh, how to simplify fractions. And so you already explain in words the steps you follow to write fractions in lowest terms. Uh, key vocabulary is expected to be used in your description, including common factor, numerator, and denominator. And you must have at least two examples. So what I might do first in my rough draft in my in my journal or my uh, spiral notebook is I would just uh, pick a couple of fractions that I know can be simplified, and then show my work. And you see right there that I've got two fractions that are now written in lowest terms. So now my goal is to write in words how, how I just did that. And so you guys know I, I found a factor that was common to both my numerator and denominator. I divided by that factor to get my, my lowest terms fraction. I did it again here. So you'll see in this first situation, I divided my numerator by 2 and divided my denominator by 2 to give me my fraction in lowest terms. You'll see that that description that I just read aloud to you would basically be exactly what I would write word for word to show how I know how to simplify fractions. The next goal uh, in the next page is how to multiply fractions. You'll notice that it says explain in words the steps you follow to multiply fractions. Now, the, there's going to be another page devoted to explaining cross-canceling or simplifying on the diagonal. So I would strongly encourage when you make your example for multiplying fractions, you only need one here, is to, to just focus on fractions that you know are not going to simplify. You know from your experiences in class, fractions that have no common factors on the diagonal is the way to go here. So you'll notice I've got a 7 and a 4, they share no common factors, a 3 and an 8, a 3 and an 8 that share no common factors. So I know that when I multiply this out, it won't be able to be simplified. And that's going to make this a simpler example so I could just focus on the topic at hand, which is multiplying fractions. Now, you all know that the steps for, for multiplying fractions, you don't need to worry about a common denominator. You just multiply your numerators and you multiply your denominators and that's all there is to it. And so really when it comes down to it, you want to make sure you explain that in your explanation. You, you know, and, and that you don't need anything more than that. You just want to follow the steps in the description. 
The next page is one that you guys have been working quite a bit on, which is simplifying before you multiply, also called cross-canceling. Now, before I go over this example, I think it's certainly worth noting that just a few days ago in class, we did a write about it, where we asked you to create uh, a multiplication problem that includes terms with common factors on the diagonals, and then use the example to explain. So here's what I would have written in my spiral notebook if I was in your class, and I would have made up my example and explained it in words. So I know that in your spiral notebook, you've already got a great example. So if you go ahead and use that as your rough draft, you should be very well set to do this part of the project. Now, as I look, I can see the 7 and the 11 share no common factors, but the 5 and the 15 sure do. I know that 5 divided by 5 equals 1, and 15 divided by 5 equals 3, creating a new problem. 7 times 1 is 7, 3 times 11 is 33, and that's my final answer. Uh, you can notice here that the 8 and the 5 share no common factors, but the 3 and the 9 share a common factor of 3. And I'm going to show that I've divided that by 3 to get 1, and that divided by 3 to get 3. 8 times 1 is 8, and 3 times 5 is 15, giving me that correct answer. Now again, I've shown that work, but that's not what the project is focused on, not just the examples, but actually explaining in words what I did. So you know that I worked on the diagonal, and I found numbers that had common factors. I divided by those common factors, so that way I had smaller numbers that are easy to work with, as we know that's a more efficient way to multiply fractions. The next step asks you to explain how to convert mixed numbers to improper fractions and vice versa. So you're explaining the steps you follow to change improper fractions to mixed numbers and mixed numbers to improper fractions. Key vocabulary terms should be used in your description, including whole number, numerator, and denominator. And you're to include a minimum of one example for each. You know, I remember in class as well that a handout was given that explained exactly how to change a mixed number into a fraction with very clear written steps and how to change a fraction to a mixed number with very clear written steps, including the terms quotient, whole number, remainder, num denominator, numerator, all the same key vocabulary that's expected for this project. So if you're holding on to those notes, or you can read quickly in my video, you've got a lot of what you need to make this easy to explain. So I know that to multiply mixed numbers, I would multiply my denominator times my whole number and then add my numerator to get my new numerator. So 2 times 4 is 8 plus 1 is 9, and my denominator would stay the same. So I've changed my mixed number to an improper fraction, and you notice that I used all the vocabulary that was described. Now, for 17 over 5, changing it to a mixed number, I'm going to divide. And I'm going to show my work right here. I'm going to divide 17 divided by 5. 5 goes into 17 3 times. 3 times 5 is 15. And there's a remainder of 2. Now, I like to write it as 3 remainder 2, but I know that my quotient 3 is my whole number. My remainder 2 is my new numerator. And my denominator, it stays the same. And so there's my equivalent mixed number for my improper fraction. And again, all the words I just said, I'd want to write those out to explain myself to meet the goals of this project. The final page or the back of your um, of your project is how to divide fractions, which was what we've done most recently. And you guys know that we've come up with a couple of different uh, processes. We talked about the uh, prescription for success which is to remember, to reciprocal, the right fraction, and then multiply. In fact, I'll find that right here in my notes from class just the other day, where I'm going to find that right near where I did that right about it. We also talked about keep, change, flip. So uh, whichever method you're using uh, to help remember how to divide fractions, explain it in words. We know the multiplicative inverse property states that we can divide fractions by multiplying by the inverse of the divisor. So we're going to go ahead and rewrite our dividend. We're going to change the, divide, the div, divising, divid, yeah, dividing sign to multiplication, and we're going to do the multiplicative inverse. We're going to uh, reciprocal 1 over 2 and change it to 2 over 1. And now we can go ahead and multiply, and we've got an answer of 8 over 5. Now we're going to utilize our skills of changing improper fractions to mixed numbers and go ahead and divide that. 8 divided by 5 goes in one time with a remainder of 3, and so I know the answer is 1 and 3 fifths for my division problem. At this point, I've gone over every single aspect and expectation for this project. Uh, sure, it took uh, quite a few minutes to explain, um, but I think that through your practice, 
uh, of all the different skills we've done in class, you should be very successful with this project if you read the directions carefully. After you've finished your work, you go back and look at the rubric to make sure you're meeting the rubric expectations so you can do well on your project. Good luck.